Good afternoon. Finally, I am making a start on the raised size for the trailer. There has been probably more thinking around this than is really required, but that's what I do sometimes. Because I'm trying to use materials that I have, uh, that's probably part of the issue. So here is the plan. I have several pieces of this that I have cut to approximately the right length. I have four of those at least. And so they will do the bottom and the top of the raised size. I also have this piece of box section that I have had for many years. Can't remember where that came from, but as you can see, it's laying around for quite a while and got quite rusty. So one of my first jobs will be actually to take to um, most of the length of that with the wire brush in the little disc grinder and clean that down so that when I come to weld it, it will actually work better. So that is going to go... Let's see if I can do this. That's going to sit there like so. But because this is actually an old imperial size, it won't fit inside there. So what I have decided to do is to use a bit of water pipe because the water pipe will go inside there like so. When I come to fit that, what I'll do is I will take this gudgeon out because it's it's just pushed through and got a nut on the back of it and run this down through there and then I will drill a hole through this way where the gudgeon's going so that it goes through there and that'll hold that in place. Now, that is slightly too big to go in the end of there because what I'll do is I'll run it down here, I don't know, some way down. <coughs> maybe all the way, we'll see. Uh, and then I'll run it up a little bit and that will go into the end of here. But because that doesn't actually fit in the end of there, I took to it with the hammer and made it somewhat square so that now that will, with a bit of persuasion, go into there. And so I will hammer that to there, you know, that far in or something or other, uh, weld it in, and then cut it off at the right length. So the job for this afternoon, really, is to clean up this bit of steel and then to cut uh, four pieces, 400 millimeters long, which will be the uprights at the end and uh, then we can carry on from there. Let's get after it. As I said, this length of box section has been around for quite a number of years so it was good, satisfying to finally use it. I decided to clean all of it down as I will use at all as part of this job. The wire brush really is the best option for cleaning this rather than a flapper disc. When using a wire brush like this of course when it's spinning around at high speed inevitably the bristles do fly off so you need to make sure that you're wearing appropriate PPE for the job. Uh, this job proved that I wasn't wearing appropriate PPE on this day. I should actually have had some overalls on because even with the dust coat some of them found their way through and into my clothing and the sharp pointy bits are not quite comfortable when they get to skin layer. I also realized latterly that I should have been wearing a mask while doing this. The rust metal dust combination not only gets up your nose, but you can smell and taste it for about a day afterwards. 
which I can assure you is not a pleasant experience. Once I had all the box section cleaned, I then set about cutting the four uprights or the four corners at 400 millimeters long. The particular height isn't critical as long as they are all the same. Once that was done, I set about hammering the pipe a bit more so that it would fit into the square box section. You'll see I wasn't altogether successful in this on the first one. It was important that I deburred all the box section pieces, both inside and out, to give clean edges for a good fit and to make welding it together easier. So, a couple of things here. One, I obviously need to flatten the pipe more because the pipe, unsurprisingly, is stronger in the round form than the rectangular hollow section or box section is in the square form. So, I'll leave that one as it is because it still has a square side there that I can use to weld the other one to. But with the others, I will. Uh, I'll flatten the pipe a bit more for a bit more before I put it in. Having thought about it more and gone back and forth in my mind several times as to whether to remove the drop latches and run the pipe spigots down further or not, you can see here that I decided that yes, I would have them going further down. Inevitably, this trailer will be lent to other people, which means it needs to be more robust than if I was the only one using it. That's not to slate other people, that's just what I have learnt over the years. Having the pipe further down inside the corner post will give the higher sides greater robustness. You may be wondering why I'm going to the trouble of cleaning out the burrs on the inside of the pipe. I don't want anything inside the pipe that may be a trap for debris and then the water can get into that and it just becomes a rust generator. The scraper wasn't really the best tool for this so I ended up going and getting a rat tail file to do the job. Initially the pipe wasn't keen to go into the corner post. This was because there were some excess bits of galvanising down there. They were quickly persuaded to move out of the way. Welding the pipe into the box section was a straightforward task as both bits of material are of roughly the same thickness. There was obviously a little bit of a gap in the corner of the box section that needed to be filled between there and the pipe, but other than that it was straightforward. When welding anything galvanised, 
you need good ventilation ideally I probably should have done this outside as it wasn't long after I started welding the four posts that I realized I had filled the workshop with smoke I quickly turned on the fan to flush it out the door I probably should move the installation of the extract fan up the to-do list a bit I have everything I need to do it so there's not really any excuse I had a conversation with a niece in a week or so back and she commented that she quite enjoyed maybe I can't remember her exact words the little sayings and things that I have from time to time even though often she had little idea of what I really meant right at the end of this video I use a metaphor of having many irons in the fire I realized as I was editing the video that there are probably many people out there today who have little understanding of where the metaphor came from. Let me explain. So irons in the fire is from the days of blacksmithing. And blacksmiths would often have more than one piece of metal in the fire, so to speak. The fire was generally coal or coke uh, and then and there would be bellows either foot operated or hand operated if it was quite a big blacksmith then there would be a boy on the bellows and the blacksmith doing the steel work and so they would work on one piece until it had got too cold to work properly and they would put that back in the fire and pull out the next piece and work on that one for a time and then put it back and start on the next one and so having many irons in the fire means you're busy because you're never really waiting for the piece of steel to heat up because there's always another one to do and that's where the saying comes from Good afternoon. It is a lovely afternoon. Fine and warm for the middle of winter. The other day I started on the high sides for the trailer and I ran out of daylight. And so I'll give you a quick overview of where I'm up to and then we'll go from there. So where I got up to was I welded this bottom rail to this end and to the upright at the other end. It would be fair to say that the welding quality is not great. There are a number of reasons for that. First time I've really used it for anything significant. And so it is quite a different process to using a stick welder, which is what I learned to weld on many decades ago uh, and have used up until this point. The other compounding issue is that um, welding the galvanized pipe into the box section was pretty straightforward and that worked fine. But what I'm now dealing with is that the the RHS box section, the, the square box section, which is this one, is, as you may be able to see there, it is 3mm wall. 
but what I'm welding to it is this rectangular box section and that is only 1.2 I think I measured it at if you can read that upside down it's only 1.2 and further compounding the issue is that uh, there is a reasonable gap uh, at the edges where I'm trying to weld so this bit here so there was quite a gap between this and this because this is actually slightly wider than this is um, excuses I know and a tradesman doesn't blame his tools but there are definitely compounding issues the plan this afternoon is to try and get this top rail in here and to do the other side as well it is already three o'clock just because i have quite a, had quite a few other things on we'll see how we go <clears throat> what i have done to try and make it easier for myself is i have just given this a whack with the hammer on both sides to push those in slightly so that as the this box section comes around it meets it much better so I've done that at both ends hopefully that will help with the welding because before I was having to put down several uh, runs on this box section on an angle like this to get it to build out enough that I could then carefully weld that bit in so hopefully I should be able to carefully now weld that bit in with maybe only a couple of runs but basically I've got to point it on this angle so that all the heat is going into this thicker part and then just stitch that in. We'll see how we go.
I am sure it will not surprise you to know that I didn't uh, achieve anywhere near as much as what I had stated I was trying to achieve uh, working on the trailer uh, in part because I ran out of daylight again and also because somebody called by and said hey can you come and help me with something and so I went off to do that so what was achieved was that I did complete that side as you will have seen and also drilled out the spigots that go down here so that the dungeons can go back in and uh, so the next part will be to do the same thing on this other side I'll come back to that uh, but probably not in the next couple of days but over the last week or so I have had a few other things on the go some of you will be old enough to remember the variety shows that used to be on television and one of the items that sort of was regularly in those kind of things for a few years was the man or woman who would do the spinning plate routine where they would have a whole lot of plates spinning on a table and they would have to keep them all spinning otherwise they'd fall off and I also remember around that time that when people were really busy with multiple things they used to talk about the fact that they were having some difficulty keeping all the, all the plates spinning uh, and sometimes some of the plates got quite wobbly uh, both in real terms in the variety show but also in life where at that time I would be potentially running you know three or four small projects at the same time and lots of staff involved and things like that and so sometimes the plates did get a bit wobbly because things didn't go smoothly or someone didn't do quite what they were you intended them to be doing it's not quite like that at the moment for me but definitely there are a few irons in the fire to choose another metaphor all right enough of this see you later bye